Hello. How are you doing? Everybody? Hi, Ben. Hey, Ben. Thank you How for joining. You? Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, of course. Of course. It's an absolute pleasure to, to have you on to talk about Power BI and visual fantasticness and all that kind of stuff, you know? And so, not just fantasticness, but some visual <laughs> problems, complications, and so on. Exactly. That's what we're here to talk about to to defeat all that kind of stuff. Do you want to do a little bit of an intro about um, who you are, um, about yourself, and we can yeah. take it from there? Yeah. Uh, should I start from where, uh, when I got into Power BI or when I got into VBA? Ah, uh, yeah, why so, not? Take, take it back as far as you want, mate. <laughs> yeah, it's probably started more than 20 years ago when I got into Excel VBA. Just by accident, I just... Uh, I had degree in finance, but on my first job, it was small firm doing some uh, wooden windows, and they used some Excel uh, to make some calculation how much it will cost and so on. And I started working there. I was doing different things like talking with clients, talking with suppliers, and started playing with this Excel spreadsheet. There were some short VBA. Uh, a couple of markers, but I started learning what is it, how it works, and as a result, I spent probably two years uh, writing uh, a really advanced application in Excel. Mm, and okay. that's how I got into IT. Wow. Then I, then I did different stuff like managing some uh, IT departments, uh, working okay. as a CIO in small firm, but at some point of time, I decided that I want to be a freelancer and work from home. So I just recalled that I knew VBA and I started working as VBA developer. Uh, worked with Excel uh, probably from 11 years ago. Okay. And a few years ago, I realized that it's good, but it's I stopped learning something new because it's VBA, nothing new. Okay. Everything is the same. So I started trying Power BI. Uh, I did some small jobs, sometimes Excel, sometimes Power BI, but mm. finally coronavirus happened. And that's what helped me to fully switch to Power BI. So, uh, uh. Yeah, I just decided that I will be building some coronavirus dashboard. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. The, the classic corona data, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the problem was that it was so hard to get data and to clean it. And the uh, first few months uh, mm -hmm. for, for March, how people publish the data, they changing every day, so this dashboard stops. Working mm. every day, you need to change mm. something. So as a result, I spent probably four months working only with this dashboard and not doing anything else. Mm. And after that, I worked only with Power BA. Nice. I'm impressed that anyone could work with VBA for so long and, and actually just want to keep working with data. My limited experience with VBA made me want to like run away and not touch data because it was like such a... <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, not not my my wheelhouse. I think is 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 fair to say, um, but yeah, it's 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 great. So you basically made that transition from a, a VBA business IT data type person, and then I like the fact that it was basically. So I didn't realize you actually didn't really get fully into Power BI until Corona uh, Corona times. It's quite interesting. Yeah. So you um and you had the the data that you were working with it was all like you said it was changing all the time because it was like Excel based is that what you mean so you like working yeah. with like yeah okay. it was different formats it, uh, I I tried to get uh, data from different countries uh, some uh, were publishing data in Excel others PDF files others were publishing uh, CSV files uh, so many formats and. They were mm -hmm. adding new pages if it's Excel, new pages, new columns, new tables. Everything was changing every day, and mm -hmm. it was really hard to to keep changing it. Crazy. 
It's interesting, Jeff was here saying that um, VBA was like hard to learn, but really fun. I didn't actually, I never reconsidered really considered the fact that the VBA would have a, a good community. I don't know why that didn't occur to me. Um, it's not, some, of course, it's not something that I have ever like used or, you know, was part of, but having a VBA community, yeah, that's a good point, actually, I suppose. If it's, if there's a good community, then it's going to be okay to use it, right? Did you, were you active in that as well? Not really. Yeah, you're like, no, I don't want to be part of that. I want to do my own. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's when, when I switched to Power BI, I started mm. writing mm. something like in Twitter, yeah, okay. using some uh, community website and so on, because mm. before this, I was just doing some stuff by myself mostly and only Googling sometimes when I have a problem to solve. Ah, okay, fair enough. Advice. But given that, um, you said you spent this such a long time, well, like such a long time, but a decent amount of time when you started working with Power BI with like this working with cleaning this dirty data and reports that were changing. Does that mean you're, you're, you, you love Power Query? I'm curious because yes, it's, yeah, 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 it's fantastic. Love it. I realized um, yesterday, I, I really don't talk as much about, I mean, even also on my, my YouTube channel, I don't do much about Power Query. But I love it. It's for me. It's one of the most enjoyable parts of working with Power BI. Just yeah, click. just shaping your data like you want, and the the cleaning it, the satisfaction of 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 a, of a fantastically clean and productive data. Which is strange because I wouldn't really consider myself a particularly tidy person. But when it comes to data, the the, the, the tidiness of it is much appreciated. You know. If you could, if you could see more than this of my office, if you could see like over this side as well, it's just like a big mess of like children's toys and uh, random stuff. So I, I try to keep this area tidy, like the data maybe, but the rest is just mess. I'm not sure. There you go. What are you gonna do? I also have some children toys on the background. It's nice. It's it's a it's a col it's colorful. It keeps it in, uh, interesting to have the, the 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 kids' toys scattered around the house. I don't think I would. Under really recognize my own house without toys scattered around everywhere and like even in, in the bathroom when there's like you know Paw Patrol and, and My Little Pony and yeah. Hot Wheels and stuff you know oh <laughs> uh, yeah and but also you're a, um you're quite the the, the visual aficionado correct uh, yeah so first I started from Power Query but uh, then I realized that it all ends as a visualization, and I knew nothing about hmm. visualization, so I started reading some books. Uh, yeah. First book was uh, called Knuffles. Uh, it's just the best book hmm. to start, I think. I Which book was that, sir? Uh, called uh, Ah, okay, fair enough, sir. I'll, I'll try and find it and link it or something, but I, I probably can't. I'm, I'm bad at posting the links. Um, yeah, so I, I, I was checking out your, um, your blog, the, the power, actually I can, I can post your blog, I think the power of bi.org is you, right? I hope I've got the wrong, the right thing there. Yeah. Yeah. That's you. Fantastic. Um, I'll post that. I hope that works. Um, this is a great blog. You've got some uh, very nice stuff on there. The song style chart in power bi is quite nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Where's, where does your inspiration come from? Tell me. Uh, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just want to to make something that works good and looks good. Mm. And I'm starting to play with it. And it's so exciting to, to make it when you need a lot of tricks and workarounds to get the result. Mm. Yeah. So it's the problem is, is inspiring me to solve it. Yeah, fair enough. So I mean, there's there's a lot of I mean, I think now because of I've been kind of focused on 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 Deneb so much, the amount of DAX that goes into creating a, a visualize. One sec, I want to post this link as well so people can have a look at it of of creating something like that. It would never actually, it would be so far above my head now, you know? But it's nice visualization, it's nice, nice stuff. And when we're talking about inspiration, maybe like what Kurt says here, we could uh, we could use this for, for, for some, some type of inspiration. Visualize the kids' toys per square meter over time. Yeah, I like that. It's a good idea. 
it will be really messy visualization. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> See? That's your next blog post, mate. Yeah. Oh, man. Very Please. But, uh, yes, yeah, so, I mean, you, as a person who enjoys the, 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 the visual aspect, do you have, are you okay with how stuff looks in Power BI? Are you okay with the standard visualizations? Or, because there's been quite a bit of chat recently about, you know, the, the, how the visualizations need to be improved, all this type of stuff. Do you have an opinion on this or do you not care? Yeah. Uh... I really don't like the fact that we can't control, at least for today, we can't control the most important things in visualization, like colors. Mm. Like they introduce it, it's conditional formatting, but it works only sometimes. But in many important cases, it just don't work. Like mm. when you have a chart with a legend, you can't control your colors from the measure and Mm. It's really complicated thing, but uh, I believe that colors is the most important attribute of the visualization. So if you can't control colors, mm. it's a big problem. So. The interesting thing about the, the, the conditional formatting of, of colors, um, or anything really, there was a big push, it was like maybe like a year and a half, two years ago, so that you, you could control many different things with, you know, um, all the different functions, you know? So a lot of that functionality came, but it just seemed to stop. I thought it would, it would like keep getting rolled out to, to, to more things, to different things. Yeah. But it just kind of like seemed to stagnate, which is disappointing for me. I think after after that, they even introduced some uh, new features that have uh, colors, uh, but uh, without the conditional formatting. So mm. thanks. If you if you already developed a conditional formatting, why it's not enabled in all new features by default so yeah strange one for me there's still the, the, the big ones the, um, the background color i definitely weird that you can't control the, um, the 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 canvas color with a with a, a function that would be awesome <laughs> for me to be honest there's, there's so many then there's so many cases in which you could use it but it's just not there but in, in regards to stuff that i think i don't understand why it isn't there i know i probably bang on about this too much and i don't want to bore people um nah, i don't care that much actually the um the the navigation bar with the drill throughs. I still think it's weird that you still, that you can't switch that off because yeah. in the navigation bar you can choose to switch off or on tooltips, a like tooltip page. Can anyone actually? Can you or anyone in the chat, if you can tell me an occasion why you would ever want to navigate to a tooltip page, that would be awesome <laughs> because. I cannot think of one case, but the option to switch that off and on is there, but drill things and one, one second, drill through is is not. It's really strange. I don't know. Uh, yes, I know you can uh, you can do that with with one second cross is um saying you can do it with uh, where is it? You can do it with a custom theme regarding change. I know, I know you can, and then there's like videos and stuff on it, but I think there should be should be a button there, to be honest, just to kind of like change and you click on that. It goes red or goes green or whatever, something like yeah. that. I don't, I don't know. A lot, a lot of things is possible, but you need custom team. You need some tricks with ducks. You need some tricks here. You need some tricks there. You need mm. workarounds. It all takes a lot of time, and the budget is limited. And you need to think about uh, how something who will come after you to work with this dashboard will support it and. Mm. Okay, mm. you can use all these tricks, work arounds, you can use the NIP with Vega and so on, but if you mm. will give it to an average customer, yeah. they will say, why, why it takes so much time and mm. how we are going to change something on this chart if it's built in uh, mm. the NIP? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, I mean, I was going to mention that as well because I, I feel a bit... Um, a bit hypocritical sitting here and saying, ah, yeah, but if you have to use workarounds and stuff, then it's difficult for the person who develops the report after you or, or, or takes it over. I really can't say that myself when like now for every single visualization, I'm like, I want to use Denner. <laughs> because <laughs> I obviously don't use it for every visualization, but um, 
Yeah, I understand that. I mean, now more than ever, I understand that's a restriction because I have to think about that. You know, yes, I can create visual visualizations that are a bit different, that are a bit more out there and stuff, um, or could be obviously you know more appropriate in some cases. I would say, but if if I'm sick or if I leave, and then someone yeah. has got to like look at this visualization, it's like you know forty five lines of code. They're like, yeah, let's just delete it and start again. <laughs> start again, you know. So yeah, it's something to think about for sure. Um, but I suppose it's the same for anything. I mean, if you um, going back, and this is not a meant to be like a, a negative comment at all, but the, um, the 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 dumbbell chart that I referenced before and and Power BI for all it's a it's a great visualization looks and it's kind of native in some regards. If you have to write DAX to do it, that still is like yeah. Like a not a hacky workaround. That's that's a bit unfair because if if you're using DAX as well, it's not so hacky. But it's it's, um, it's something that's not available or accessible to everyone. You know. Yeah, but just what I like. It's I prefer to use uh, native visuals. If I better make some tricks, but use native visuals uh, mm. when possible. So yeah. I mean, it's a good. See what um, Chris. I never, I never know what to call Graham, Chris, Chris, or Kratos, um, or Kratos. I'm not sure how he pronounces that, but I call them both in the chat just to make it um, fair. Yeah, it basically, it's the same sort of thing, not reference to this particular um, thing from Baz, but regarding how it works. Yes, it's a. Sometimes it's a hack. Sometimes it's something that's essentially. Yeah, I mean, I've, I think I, I did a, a couple of videos like this ages ago where you say, oh, if you do this this way and then you change this and then you make it that way, then you can change completely how the visual looks. But if it's not intended that way, all of a sudden that might just disappear overnight, you know, and you're left with a visualization that looks nothing like how, how you intended it to look. So you got to be careful mm. when you when you do all of these things, you know. Yeah, and I think one more problem is when you using some tricks uh, it's a performance sometimes you can make it look like you want but it will be so slow that it doesn't that's true. make any sense that's true that's true because ah, that's if you write dax for everything for every small thing and you need conditional formatting for every point so yeah that's true that's true and i'm going to bring up this because um <laughs> um kurt I heard Kurt in, in Denmark say you're going to MacGyver something. MacGyver. <laughs> I love this expression, MacGyver. Yeah, but that's <laughs> MacGyver. It. It's it's true. It's what it is, just kind of going through and um, MacGyvering your visualizations. Uh, yeah. I would. I think for, for MacGyver, I kind of miss the MacGyver generation. For me, it would be more like A-teaming it. You know, like, did you ever watch the A-team? I watched the A-team when I was a kid. And they would they would get themselves in a, in a situation. They had to get out of the situation, so they would build. They would be like stuck in a prison cell, and they had like a roll of toilet paper and like I don't know, like one candle, and they would build like a military tank to burst out of the um to burst out of the um uh, of the prison. So MacGyvering it, a teaming it, whatever. That's um that's kind of what you got to do with the visualization sometimes to get where you need to go. Um. Did you uh, see any, I know, maybe I shouldn't mention it because, I mean, obviously when I say this, it's a joke. We're in competition with MS at night, but not really, obviously. Um, have you seen any of it about any of the, the um, things that are going to be released at all? Because if we're talking about the visualization aspect, one of the things that I really like is this, um, this what's it called, on, on visual editing. I'm not sure what they call it, but how you can actually edit the visual by clicking on the element within the visual and all the elements kind of pop up right there. Does that, does, am I describing that well or does it sound like a crazy person right now? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I see what you mean. Yeah, so like if you, if you like click on the line of a line bar, of a line bar, Jesus Christ, you're going to the line of a, of, a, of a line chart, then you can um actually change the color you click on it and all the options kind of like pop up right there on the visualization like yeah, you change yeah, the color. I can, I can see yeah. yeah it's gonna be cool it's it's a bit sad and i'm so happy about it um maybe that says a, <laughs> maybe that says a lot but i think it's gonna be great i hope it will it will work well uh, with uh, two, two tips as well because now when i'm trying to make something on small tool deep everything is covered it with some 
headers and so on, and it's hard to change the size of the visual to to put on the it on the tool tip. tip. Yeah. But if you if you make if you make it full screen size, it should be okay though, right? Because it's, if it's only here, but I think if you zoom in, it should be easier. But it's a good point. On the tooltips, everything's a little bit smaller. Um, that's a, that, that's fair. But yes, it's the same with everything. It looks really great, and I hope it will be awesome. But it depends how they execute it. I'm sure they'll do a fine job. I'm putting my full yeah, full yeah. my full trust in the Power BI team. Um, but, but I'm sure it'll be quite cool. Um, but yeah, it's it's as again, it's something that they kind of showed very very briefly in this. What was it? Probably our next step in in Denmark, and it got a, a good round of applause. So it's something that's we kind of um, take us in the right direction. Ooh, when I'm thinking about this, this did you like the visualizations and the upgrading? Did you do this um, survey that they posted on LinkedIn? Did you try that at all? Yeah, I tried it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. It was just I, I finished it, but it was like everything is bad and uh, some <laughs> random uh, random selection of whatever. Yeah, it's true. I, I got to a point that they wanted to show that this thing is bad, and we are going to make something much better because there were some better visualizations shown on the bottom of the page when you choose an option. Hmm. But I don't understand how this uh, survey is going to help because hmm. I think everything answered is bad or, or chooses some random options. <laughs> so how useful is it? Yeah. The survey it's, itself. So. It was, I mean, actually, it's interesting because the, uh, Kurt saying it and Sandeep also saying it, that it was very long. Um, I expected it to be, this, I'm expected to be longer. And I'm like, did I do the right survey? <laughs> it was, there was like, what was this, like 16? 16 pages, yeah. Okay, 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 because it wasn't, it was long, but I think for me it wasn't as long because maybe I'm just the same boat as you, perhaps, I'm not sure, but I, for me it was just them kind of recognizing that it was bad because a lot of the stuff was just, was just bad. And what I did is I looked at each one and I would look at the question and I would look at the visualization for like 10 seconds and I would answer. Because if I can't answer the question in that amount of time, then it's a bad visualization, yeah. right? Yeah, I agree. So if if one try if one will try to answer to these questions and and uh, think five minutes about it, that what yeah. what can what it doesn't make any sense. So yeah, I mean, I, Just. I was trying to see through the eyes of my my my, my boss's boss. I'd be like, if I create that visualization, this is how we'd look at it. You'd look at it and be like, what's this? No, I don't care. So I answered. There was there was one question though. I was driving me crazy. I answered it and they said it was wrong. So fair enough. I didn't mind that it was wrong because that's the point. That, but I looked at it again. I was like, how am I wrong? How am I wrong? I'm pretty sure I'm right. I forget which. Yeah. I should have taken a screenshot. I was speaking about it with with them with Jeff where, Jeff Weir when I was kind of going through it a little bit. Um, it's like I, I mean, I'm sure I was wrong. But I would like to know how I was wrong because I would look because my answer looked very right. And um, but again, that's probably part of the problem, right? Because it's just so difficult to know what's what. Yeah. yeah. Just mentioned in the chat that I don't know option uh, could be great in that survey. I agree, and probably an option like I can't uh, um, get the answer in short amount of time, mm. something like that. So. It's also if it'd be, a good option that explains the problem of this intentionally mm. bad visualization that they created for this survey. I was thinking maybe the pages could have been timed as well, so they could see how long it would take. But then again, if it was timed, if you go and get a cup of coffee, whatever, just to kind of get that across as well. Um, every yeah. any survey over five questions is too long. That, that, that's that's a fair point. So I suppose in that regard, it was long. There was lots of questions. I think it was for me just the fact that it said. I think. On the one page, it said it should take like an hour, and I I got through a lot faster than that. I was like, click yeah. that now, click this, <laughs> click that, and thank you, you very much and goodbye. Because... Yeah, ex exactly. Um, but I know, I mean, for me, I think it should have impact. Again, I think it was just for me that the, if, I I don't know what their intention was. Of course, I didn't speak to anyone. I know a couple of people did speak to them to talk about what they were trying to achieve or whatever. 
they just chose very bad visualizations. And for me, I was kind of hoping to say, okay, we're, we're going to, I don't know, remove options or we're going to get rid of some visualizations or we're going to streamline what we provide or, you know what I'm saying? That was those. I see that them, they are doing something good uh, because there are bad visualization and there are good visualization in this mm. survey. So it's, I understand that they are moving in the right direction, but the mm. survey itself was really confusing. Mm. Excuse me, sorry. I'm drinking my water from a bottle that I got from a gym that I never attended. Standard stuff, right? Um, yeah. This is I'm also um Imran is saying as well, the um the 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 Power BI KPI visualization and card needs a massive, massive revamp. So okay. Yeah, I mean it's true. I mean I was speaking to um who was it called Brian 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 Julius about um the what's it called? Is it the, the dash not the dashboard, the it look kinda of looks like a speedometer. What's it called again? When they kind of this like semicircle, kind of like a speedometer looking thing. Some will know what I'm talking about. Um, and I never use that because I think it's pretty horrible. But Brian was saying, yeah, okay, they're, they're good. And, but again, the point was that he was making is that they are the gauge. Thank you. Gauge, gauge, gauge. Thank you, everyone, the gauge. Um, they are actual, <laughs> they are good visualizations, but that one is, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um yeah gauge indeed um that that isn't a good example of a gauge i think so gauges i mean for example this if you look at greg deckler and he does his um microsoft hates greg quick measures if you want to call it that which he, which he does he has a, a, a dax where you can put a, like a gauge inside a, a matrix or something and that's a really cool gauge you know so it's not about just, you know, maybe adding new visualizations at all, or even at all. It's a kind of like about updating and improving the ones that they, they do have to offer and make them kind of look better and more functional and more usable, you know. We'll see. We shall see. Time will tell. All these changes are planned, but that will appear within the next, I don't know, six months uh, or so. Yeah. And I think for most business reports, it's just, the main uh, native visuals are good enough or you just need more control over the colors and other stuff. And uh, if you need something really special, mm. you have the nap and Vega. And... Yeah, true. I'll try to take you later, I suppose. Um, but yeah, you're right. I suppose at the end of the day, you it's not the fact that the the standard visualizations are are good enough. They 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 have to be good enough because it's the out like what what percentage of users are ever going to use? I mean, for all I love it, and I would hope many people if possible would use it. What percentage of users are ever actually going to use Deneb? I would say it's quite a small percentage are ever going to use Deneb because more people just want to create reports, have them look good, and it should it should just be easier to make things look good. And not just look good, but also get good insights very, very quickly, you know? What I don't like from the native visuals uh, are maps. I really love icon map visual. Thank you, right, it's yeah. So many possibilities because the native visuals, they are too simply, you, you can't control anything on the map, so. No, yeah. Have you used much of the icon map at all? Uh, I'm doing an interesting project right now with Icon Map. It's oh, okay. A lot of different things on the same map, like uh, counties, some regions uh, that include um, many counties, some points, uh, some labels, and a lot of different stuff on the same map. Mm. Okay, cool. I, I doubt it's the sort of thing you're ever going to be able to share with anyone outside of the uh, of the business, which is always a shame, yeah. you know. You, when you create something cool, it's like, oh, but I can't, I can't even send a screenshot of it. Um, but yeah, yeah. This, this is how it works with yeah. the this largest works. part of what we are doing. So this is why some, sometimes uh, it's good to take some open data and build some like coronavirus reports or whatever. 
like when I have time, I'm building uh, reports with uh, bicycle counters from Krakow. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, because I like bicycles and I live in Krakow and I have this data. Makes sense. I, I used to have data for um, the number of people visited, like uh, p- pedestrians on certain streets in, in across Germany. Which was great, but the the API stopped being free, so I, so, so so I do not have that anymore. Um, but yeah, it's yeah, you're right. I mean, I think it's we we spoke about this very briefly before we went live about how you have it's important to have the, the little bits and pieces of your own data to kind of work on and and play on. But then the, the you do that thing that you described where you're like, okay, I'm just gonna try and create this visualization, and then you kind of tinkering around, and then you're playing with it, and then all of a sudden it's like one one o'clock in the morning. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> Why am I still sitting here? <laughs> it's how it goes. Well, uh, but when, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. When kids were small, it was okay for me to to sit with some playing with some visualization or whatever in the middle of the night. But now mm. at the morning, I need to go to kindergarten with my son and so on. So yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it's a problem when I realize that it's already two o'clock in the mm-hmm. night and I'm still doing something because the next day will be lost. Yeah, I hate that. Yeah, it sucks. It's not like when I was when I was younger, I could stay up stay up all night and then next day I was fine again. No, no, that's 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 and not the, on the cards anymore. Yeah, when I was student, it was like the night in the nightclub and in the morning exam in the, in the university, yeah. and it was okay. Yeah. Now it's can just imagine. So I remember days of being at university and playing um there's this game football manager, I think back then it was called Championship Manager. And you just played for hours and hours and then you realize you had like an assignment due in like one day, like okay, I will now do like three works three weeks of work in one night. <laughs> just just get <laughs> just get through it anyway uh, but anyway sorry back to what you mentioned before yes the icon map is awesome uh i also really up until quite recently and largely because of the icon map i never actually um liked any maps in in, in power bi reports or visualizations because again not because there's anything generally wrong with it but they're normally so misused or just Badly used probably is probably a better way of saying it that, you know, the standard thing where you have like a map and then you have a big circle and this, the bigger the circle is, the bigger the sales are. It's like that doesn't. And that was all I saw on maps. But with icon map, you can do like amazing yeah. stuff and really show show how it's meant to be shown. It's, it's quite cool. What is interesting with this project that I'm doing right now, that the client told me that they asked many Power BI developers and everybody mm-hmm. told that it's not possible to make what they need in Power BI. Really? They, they just don't know icon map visual. So yeah, but, it's not possible on using native visual. This is a good point though. I mean it's it's I the icon map was something that I kind of had seen without really knowing I'd seen it. There's a um, a, a couple in, in Australia, I think it's called Data EI. Um, I also get the name of it, and they make amazing projects with maps. You know, they, they if you look at all the work that they, a lot of them is published on their website, they're quite it's quite open as well. Um, they do amazing stuff with maps, and I didn't realize that it's all done through Icon Map. Um, so if it's, it's it's there, it should be used. I think the only problem with it is that because it's a map, it can't discover EI. I said, what did I say? Data EI or something weird? Probably discover EI. Thank you, um, Jeff and and, and Kratos, Stroke Chris. Um, yeah, it's kind of sitting there, but I think it, I guess because it's a map, it can never be, um, it can never be, what's it called? Verified or whatever. It can never be officially part of the, 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 um, whatever, the visualization store because you can't do that. As I learned recently, if it's a map, it can't be because I can't go through that, that process, which is a shame. Um, cause maybe some companies don't want to use visualizations that aren't certified is what I was looking for. But uh, yeah, awesome app, awesome, awesome tool. So yeah. I am, um, I, I plan on playing that soon. 
Jeff mentioned it, VBA again. Yeah, uh, this is what really good with VBA is that you have, it's a Excel object model and you have access to any property of whatever there is in Excel. Is it a cell? Is it a, yeah. something else? You can console everything from VBA, so yeah. Mm. If you need, if you need to optimize something, you can optimize in Excel. If you need to do a lot of work to just moving something pixel here, pixel there in uh, Power BI, you don't even have a field to enter some numbers for the column width. Like mm. you need to just play with the mouse and yeah, yeah. That's a fair point. Here's a great question from Kurt, by the way. Nice and simple, but good question. What is your dream data viz project? I like it. Well, probably something not uh, commercial and confidential, as something that will be based on public data and that thousands of people will use it. Hmm. Actually, when I built a coronavirus dashboard, uh, it didn't last long, but uh, there was time when like 40,000 of people visited my website uh, daily to view the dashboard. Wow. That's really cool. That's really interesting. Yeah, that's really exciting when uh, you see that a lot of people really use it because when you do something for business, sometimes you just build and no one is going to use it. Yeah. Sometimes the, the, the usage metrics of reports is very, very upset, <laughs> very upsetting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, I really enjoy also building stuff that's like open. I can like, like publish out and stuff, but yeah, that would be quite nice to kind of, as a, as a dream project. Yeah. And so when I was building it, it was like, okay, if this world is going to die because of this virus, at least they will be looking at my dust. <laughs> Oh God. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. That's pretty much what it was like. To be honest, that's why I couldn't work with, 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 um, I've, I've got, I fully respect everyone who did, but I, I couldn't make any Corona report. I couldn't do it. And I was like, I just, I just want something that's not about Corona, especially when it was like hard lockdown and I was doing Power BI trainings online, of course, with my, my company and stuff. Um, I was like, let's, I was, I was, searching everywhere for like you no know, a, a nice data set that wasn't work related so it'd be a little bit interesting um but if you went on to like kaggle or something it was just like corona 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 i was like i just don't want to use corona right now um but yes it was perfect i mean because there were so many elements to it right so it was a, they were all very very good data yeah. sets to be fair so i can understand why i found a data set a couple of days ago about dogs so i'll i'll be using that for for, for a while now about dog intelligence and dog training and dog size i think um so yeah that was that that was a, that was a nice find it's always enjoyable when you find a, a new interesting data set you know yeah i think for, i'm not sure for me for dream projects something I, I always would like to work with um sports data like football i'm not a massive i mean i like football but I'm not a huge football fan, but I find football data really interesting. But the problem with it is that it's not that open because obviously companies pay huge amounts of money to, you know, to yeah. market and sell it and stuff. So what is it? Opta. Um, I think Opta are like the big sports data company, like Opta stats and stuff. And uh, to get any of their data is just ridiculous. I tell you what, I used to do, um, I used to run a, a website about amateur football in Berlin like amateur, like the lowest levels of football, like the, the football that you go and watch at the bottom of your street, that kind of stuff, you know? And um, I contacted the company who were in charge of the stats once about, you know, like goals scored and player stats. And I said, look, I, I can scrape all this data from your website, but it's a bit messy. Um, but how much does it cost to actually just get the data delivered to me? And I wanted like pretty much all levels of amateur football for one season. And they quoted me 25,000 euros. And I was like, what? I mean, this is data that, with all due respect, no one really cares about because it's amateur football that no one really watches. 
there's so little interest in it. I was like, you're charging 25,000 euros for one season of amateur football stats. That <laughs> is mad. So I just kept scraping it from the website. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, Chris is right. Data is indeed um, dollar signs, whatever you want to call it. It's 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 crazy. Um, yeah, Kurt's right. Um, Netflix streaming data is very good fun. I requested my Netflix data just a few um, weeks ago, actually, and they, they delivered per email. I wish there was an API for that. I don't think there is. I could be wrong. But that, that's fun data to work with to kind of kind of go back over time and kind of judge yourself as to how much Netflix you're watching. Um, so it's, it's nice to put in. I, 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 when it, they delivered it, I was really, I was like, okay, let's see. Let's see how much my viewing increased during the lockdown. Yeah, so I went back to like, was it March, March 2020? And I went to see, I went to see, okay, let's see this massive spike in my viewing figures. And it went down. And I was like, what? I watched less Netflix during lockdown? That's and I was sitting there for like half an hour trying to work out why it was. And then I suddenly realized, oh, that's right. Because when that happened, that's when I got a subscription to Disney and to Amazon Prime and to, and to HBO. Just, just in that period of time, I think my subscriptions went up massively. So, of course, I wasn't watching Netflix all the time. I was watching streaming services across multiple streaming platforms. So that explained why my Netflix went down. But I'm sure overall viewing figures were, did indeed spike hugely. So there you go. Yeah, what are you going to do? So... I will move my camera a bit because Jeff mentioned some books and there are more. <laughs> oh, the Tower of Books. Love it's it. It's all about data visualization. Cool. Any favorites? The entire tower. Nice one. Do you have a couple of recommendations for us, mate? I love a, I love a couple of book recommendations. Uh, I think I made some about these book recommendations on my website. Uh, oh, really? Okay. I I, I never have time to, you do to write some new reviews and recommendations, but I will yeah. try to, to add more because there are many more books than I already mentioned on my website. That's a, there's actually some nice, okay, storytelling with data. That is a good one. Uh, cool. Yeah, okay, I'll go through that and I'll um, make my shelves. I mean, my shelves are kind of the background there. It's just covered in toys, to be honest. And my books are kind of piled up on top of my my computer over here. Uh, so maybe I should I should maybe I should make my my background look a bit more like a bit more more well read or something. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, good. Look through them. Lots of DAX yeah. stuff. I like that. Definitely like DAX DAX patterns, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's the, good. the problem with this kind of book that you never can finish reading it because it's not the book that you just open it and in a few days you finished it. It's a book yeah. <laughs> you're going to read and read again for years mm. maybe. And yeah. But that's it's interesting said because I for a long time I didn't read any books about anything Power BI or, or work related at all. I, I, I couldn't and and that was the thing because I couldn't understand how I could just sit down and like pick up a book about DAX or whatever data visualize and just read it from like like cover to cover um and then i realized okay that's just not what you do with that sort of book you kind of pick it up uh, either go to a chapter that or a page that you kind of want to learn about and then or whatever just kind of open it a random page and then read that sort of stuff for me reading was always like i'm going to pick up a book and i'm going to read it and that's what i do but if, of course that makes no sense you're quite right um but always nice to have reference around and uh i think what I enjoyed about the the, the, the few books that and, and that I had, I got the the recently the um, Alberto Cairo. I forget the name of it because as I've demonstrated quite often on this these shows, I've got a horrific memory. Um, it's nice just the way things are explained, you know, not just like the fact, but the the kind of the 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 words that specific authors are are, are using to explain the concepts. I think really drives the point home and just makes it a much more kind of pleasurable experience than kind of i'm not sure like uh, watching a video or, or reading a, a blog post if you will those are all fantastic things but it's just a different experience which is quite nice uh, and yes this one called this, uh, this came out this storytelling with you about presenting skills nice 
another recommendation there. Cool. I like it. I like it. What's the orange book? What is that? What's that referencing to? I've got no idea what that is. I feel like I should know the orange book. You know what that is? No. I don't um, know. I feel like I'm missing something there. There you go. What are you going to do? Hey, I want to say, actually, um, I keep um, meaning to, to bring this up. We talked the um before we were talking on, on, on Twitter and you mentioned you, you sent me a link because um, you mentioned like your, your photograph from the thumbnail was you and you lying in a hammock, which I thought was quite, quite a nice touch. But the, the, the message that you sent was the link to your, to your Instagram, which of course I won't post yet, your Instagram, <laughs> walking through the woods and lying in hammocks and, and what have you. That looks like a very nice outdoors lifestyle, which I quite missed to be honest. Uh, that happened also a few years ago, just mm. like probably four years ago. I never was uh, into hammocks. I used to hiking in mountains with a tent. Mm. And nice. uh, four years ago, I just bought a hammock just to, to hang somewhere in a park uh, for nice. an hour or so. But uh, once I tried to sleep in a hammock, hmm. I now love hammocks. I have already you know, 10 hammocks at home <laughs> for the entire <laughs> family. <laughs> and we spent a lot of time in the hammocks uh, and we sleep uh, in the forest in hammocks. So, That's awesome. Yeah. So next time that we do one of these, I would like to see you in the hammock during the live chat. We could, we, we, we could do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's gone. I'm all on my own now. Are you leant down and it seems like he was pulling a cable from the wall. What are you going to do? But that being said, it's been 45 minutes. So maybe he was just saying, I don't want to talk anymore because it's been 45 minutes. Um, so I'm not going to try and talk and kind of kill time because I'm not so good at that. So I'll just say that. <laughs> just, that was a, a really abrupt goodbye. So I'll just say uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. I really enjoyed this um, live chat. Thank you for all the questions and um, to keep the, the chat going and, and what have you. Um, yeah, Jeff, Jeff, you put up to him. Jeff's been trying to get his own back since I left him on his own a year ago. He's going to hold that vendetta against me for the rest of my life. <laughs> um but yeah, someone said before that with the, the, the Power BI community or something, or the data community should share our um, Netflix data. Where was this? Maybe coming in. Here it is. I think that would be quite a, quite a nice idea, but I might also feel a deep, deep sense of shame as to how much, <laughs> how much Netflix are actually on mine. Especially now that when I work sometimes, I can have something on just like in the background as I work. So I'm kind of like working away with something on just in the background. So I can move that as an excuse for how much. TV uh, or Netflix, I watch it, I should say. One second, one second. Are you back? Uh, I'm back. I'm sorry. Something happened with my laptop. It just turned it off. You don't for have no to reason. Watch this, mate. It's okay. I was I was trying to blag my way through the, the, those few minutes. Um, trying to... Um, <laughs> exactly. Just control and delete yourself. Ooh. Oh, man. Are you okay? What's but it's wrong? fine, mate. Uh, it's... Don't worry about it. I was I was about to kind of start to say thank you very much for joining everyone and to call it a day anyway because it's been. I thought I thought maybe it was just okay. It's been forty five minutes. I'm bored now. I'm going bye. Um, but I appreciate you coming back so we could say a proper goodbye to everyone if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Cool. So, uh, mate, thank you so much for joining and taking the time out to talk about all the things that we've spoken about. It's really flown by, actually. This one. Um, it seems like it was just like 10 minutes or something, but it's been, it's been a nice long chat with you. Um, thanks to everyone for commenting, asking all the questions, all that kind of stuff. It's always much appreciated. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Yes. Thank you, man. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Say, say it again, sorry. I thank you me. and thank everyone. Who... Of course, of course. Um, yeah, so cool. Thanks, everyone. Uh, take care of yourselves, and I shall see you on social media somewhere or next Thursday back here at the usual time. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye. Don't you wanna